ride from Zamud Lamini. Hello. But he takes this trip as often as he can, by whatever means necessary. That's nice. <laughs> because Mzamo is trying to save his own backyard. I cannot imagine it. You know, you see all these mountains, you know the beauty. So once you dug it open, then all of this is going to be destroyed. The breathtaking scenery of Ponderland in eastern South Africa could change forever. An Australian company, Mineral Resource Commodities, wants to mine the dunes for titanium sands. So, so where were you... And Amzamo feels that the area is just too special to become a mining site. I tell what the miners don't tell, the, the impact of it in the community. I was born here, so I would like to see this area looking like this and my children sit like this. With the global hunt for commodities showing no sign of slowing down, their lives seem destined for change. This is David McKenzie for CNN in Ponderland, South Africa. We've been down this road before. Mega mining companies promising upliftment and jobs in exchange for gouging millions of tons of sand from a pristine coastline. For mining to happen, some of these locals will have to move. For the past seven years, Sineku Kusukulu, an environmentalist, has been dedicated to saving his home and his people's heritage. Is the founding member of Sustaining the Wild Coast, working closely with Conservation International. So they don't know how they're going to mine an area which is a protected land according to decree. As we're Pondus, we originate from here. Our grand grand grandmothers, they were buried here. As I'm, uh, I'm young, I'm at the youth. Uh, I was seeing that the, the, the old people, they held the meetings in the tribal, uh, tribal authority and they told me there is a mining going to be happening on, on this area. But they have a question how their names are on the, on the list of supporting because they know, they, they know from their heart they are not supporting the mine, but their names are on the list. Nie net non schleerreik lont nie. No buntu mazeka sa oma's hier in Baleni begrawe. No kwandu mazeka is in april 27 dood, maar het blijkbaar meer as a jaar na haar dood haar skriftelike steun aan die mine toegesê. I was shocked. And I was devastated also because I know the kind of lady she was. She wouldn't be part of that thing. You know about the people that are serving at Zolko, I think it's a quiet number of few people that individuals with their own individual interests, not the, be the best interested heart of the community. Mzamu Dlamini and John Clark had each nine years ago to learn how Mzamu John's tour gets on the Willekes was. John is a maatschappelijke worker. John means that the ground has to be used as a maatschappelijke It's admired for the fact that it entrenches environmental rights. And in that clause 24 talks about justifiable social and economic development. Can the mining take place as a justifiable social and economic development? Yeah, I want to let you go. You know, this doesn't start only from Masega. There are many people whom their names appeared on the list, which they know nothing about mining. Mama Masega was a teacher. How can he, she put X when she's signing? There is something behind that. Yeah. Because they had the names and the ID numbers correct. Yes. So who is responsible? This started to these meetings that were called that all those that want electricity must come and register their names and IT numbers. Mm. Which happened one day, 
in our tribal where we are attended. People, when they were registering their names, they, they wrote their names, surnames, and IDs. Which maybe that was converted, I don't know whether it was, but, but there's several meetings. If you want this, come and register. If you want toilets, come and register. Sinagogo Zakulu's name is on the list. Just look at that. Just look at that. Just look at that. Um, and I guess if I turned up looking for food, my name would have been on the list too. That would have been funny. Eh? Even my name is there. Even my name is there. The theme of this story is to explain a new beginning for human rights in a particular place, precipitated by a conflict over mining rights. To understand where it is heading, we need to understand when the violations started. The false list submitted by Zolka calls to mind an incident that occurred in the middle of the 19th century when Ponderland was still independent and governed according to the indigenous customs and traditions under the legendary King Faku. The British colonial resident to Ponderland, Henry Francis Finn, conspired to produce a letter which he claimed King Faku, who couldn't read or write, had mandated him to write on his behalf to the governor of the colony of Natal. Had King Faku's trusted friend, the Wesleyan missionary Thomas Jenkins, not exposed the fraud, the entire Ponderland right up to the Imzakaba River may have been ceded illegally to the colony of Natal. They were not after the heavy mineral deposits, but land, so that the fledgling colony of Natal could attract more settlers from Britain to make the colony more viable. However, I do not see much difference between what Henry Francis Finn tried to do in 1850 to King Faku in comparison to what Zolko tried to do to the Amadiba in 2008. Reverend Jenkins managed to expose the fraud. However, there was already a historical inevitability unfolding. In the ensuing half century, the discovery of extraordinary mineral wealth of South Africa changed the course of history. In 1894, Faku's successor, King Sikau, was forced by Cape Prime Minister Cecil John Rhodes to sign the Treaty of Annexation, which surrendered Pondo sovereignty, the last independent African territory in South Africa to lose its independence. This meant that Amapondo men could be forced into the emergent industrial labour economy to provide cheap labour in the mines of the Transvaal. The transformation to meaningful human rights started exactly 100 years later, when, in April 1994, all South Africans celebrated the birth of democracy by voting in the first non-racial parliament. When Parliament adopted our new modern constitution in 1996, it made history for two reasons, both controversial. Firstly, it, it accommodated traditional African governance and customary law, which many felt was harking back to the past. Secondly, looking very much to the future, it entrenched within the Bill of Rights, for the first time in history, environmental rights. The Bill of Rights echoes everything that's in the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, adopted in 1948, ironically the year that the National Party came to power and proceeded for the next 46 years to violate all of them. It so happens that virtually simultaneous with adoption of the new constitution in 1996, Mark Caruso, the CEO of the Australian mining company MRC, arrived on the scene too. At the time, no one, least of all Mark himself, realised that he was, in fact, opening up an opportunity for environmental rights, as defined in the Constitution, to now acquire grounded meaning in the way that Eleanor Roosevelt advocated in 1948. It was all happening below the surface up until 2003 when 5050 producer Don Guy and presenter Jonathan Rands spent a weekend filming what I call the Intentu moment. It takes hundreds of thousands of years for mineral deposits like this to, to find their way into estuaries such as this one. But right now it's these mineral deposits between here and Mzamba about 22 kilometers away that are causing a great deal of excitement and anchor. Ecotourism developments there, and to the north, are only just beginning to realize their potential. Horse trails have been developed, and with the help of monies from international organizations like the European Union, people from all over the world have come to know 
northern Ponderland. You see, the mining will take place from Zamba River, 22 kilometers to Skombe River. This is where our trail is happening. If mining is to go ahead, Amadiba horse trails and hikes will be history. So has, has your name always been Madiba? Madiba, is yes, it, eh? all the time. Because the area is Amadiba. Yeah. Therefore I'm named after the, the area. Were you personally responsible for setting up this, the trails and all that stuff? Yeah, I was a mayor on that time for Pisana municipality. So how long has the, the Amadiba Trust been operating? It's seven years now. And, and has it shown sort of growing success? Show a great Sussex. We are growing up every year. How many people do does Amadiba employ? We have plus minus 400 people that are benefiting. With the, the proposed mining, the proposed road, are these things that you see in a positive light? We need a very great help to anybody that has a knowledge. Because the people of this area, I have said, they are illiterate. They don't have information. They don't have knowledge and experience of mining and end-to-end -end effect of mining and to ecotourism. There is no dialogue on this matter. But, but ecotourism, I must put that <clears throat> clear. Yeah. This is the project that is existing. We don't want, I must say it clearly, any project that will destroy and finish what we have. We want a project that will assist to what we have. We are having seven people educated as a matric and well experienced others of the two. Why don't we form the empowerment company for the people of this area? That empowerment company is not for mining. I must put it very clearly. Therefore, the empowerment is the company to make sure that it's getting some jobs when there is a job going in this area. Then 60% of that income by the empowerment should go straight to the infrastructure of this area. But people now are associating us with the mining. No, it's not like that. We have about eight groups that are shareholders of the, of the empowerment. Any money that comes to empowerment will go straight to the groups and the groups will distribute according to their functions to the people. Also the TEM, when we form up the empowerment, they ask us that they need to have a social plan. Therefore, they appointed the empowerment contracted for six months to deal with that job. Then after that, finish the marriage. The marriage is the contract it's, it's, of six months on putting... To, to look so at the social needs of, of that the empowerment group has, has uh, determined. Has, yes, has, has then we give them that and therefore they will pay us because we are doing the job. Then after that, the marriage is finished. <laughs> Therefore, we'll look for other opportunities because we are not an organization for mining and we will not be an organization for the mining. We are the organization for all developmental issues that will come in there. Even if the mining is a very pretty girl? Whether it's a very pretty girl, you see what I explained to the people I was young in the revolution. I said, we have a virgin land here. Everybody's looking to us. We need to be very strong on a selection which husband must marry us. We are still very strong. We are not going to be influenced by anybody. The ecotourism is the marriage that we have. Then to engage other relationships to the marriage, I said to you first, we will be very defensive. We don't want to lose the marriage we have. We need somebody to help and make strong marriage to what we have. I was their guest here, but my presence as a journalist was being met with suspicion. Why the journalists are worried about our development here? Do you think the journalists are against what you're doing? Is that the feeling that you get? No, because I don't know the real need of the journalists because the journalists are supposed to come to help us, but on the radios and the newspapers, a lot of fight without community. Fight, the community is still quiet. The role of the media couldn't have been clearer. So those that are, are supporting the mining, they support it privately. You know, they hold the meetings in the community. They buy a lot of meat and they provide people with beer. You know, when the old people are, are, are drunk, they, they say, oh, this mining will come with a lot of money. You see, now at the beginning we have fun. So one way or another, as is the story of old, the money that yeah. is behind this whole thing, is 
breaking up community. It's, yeah, it is. There's distrust yeah. and there's... Because some people are also poor, so they can even support it easily because it comes with a lot of money. And you? What do you want? Oh, I'm, I'm very against the mining because it will come and destroy our land. The number of, to of tourists will decrease. If they, they already knew that there is mining happening in this area, they will not come. Because what they come here for, they come for the, for the beauty of this land and, yeah, and the wilderness. With an issue as controversial as this, it, it, it really surprises me that no NGO or capacity building organization has actually come into this area and said, what are the issues that we're looking at? We're looking at mining, we're looking at a road, we're looking at, at eco-tourism, and said, let's look at the pros and cons of all of them. Let's, let's give you the information that you as a community need so that you can make an informed decision. It seems the debate is happening up here and the people on the ground are actually being alienated, marginalized, and aren't really part of this decision-making process. That's a problem. Three years later, after NGOs painstakingly worked out an effective response to Jonathan's challenge, 5050 was finally able to cut through the media cordon that the mining protagonists had tried to draw around the Amadiba. We investigate bribery, corruption, and even murder, all in the name of mining along the spectacular wild coast. When we arrive at the school, we find an assembly of people representative of almost every facet of the community. People desperate to be given a voice. The term corruption comes up again and again. Mr. John Barnes, a spokesman for the mining industry, about these allegations of crime and corruption and intimidation and murder, all being done on behalf of the mining industry here. And he said he was not prepared to speak to us or any members of the press. But our efforts to get Zamila Madiba Kunya to answer to the allegations prove fruitless. He wanted to know who'd given us permission to actually come into this area and speak to local people. It was on the 1st of December is where it was decided that uh, there should be a forum that is elected of directors mm. who will take this uh, issue of mining to the community. Mm. I'm the member of the community. Mm. I was born and bred in this area, but it was the first time for me to hear that. Mm -hmm. And I received a call by yeah, Tonya to say I must be there mm -hmm. so that I must get what the development of the area is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then from then, I was elected to be the director. We will meet with the other directors who are coming mm -hmm. from uh, uh, mm -hmm. Australia. I was part of the parcel of the, the first wife. Mm -hmm. Then we went to the trading alley mm. where we were trained by Max Pocona. We were having the questions about who formed this circle which we are joining because we were not forming, we were joining. Mm. And David told us that they are resigning. We must get there so that we let the community know everything. We ask whether the community is aware of this, that you were the directors for the community. Yeah. And they said they are resigning, we must take place. No man has asked the simplest question that why Kunya from Tolobin and Max from East London all joined together to form a PEE of Tolobin mm. while Botswana is and never belonged to Tolobin. No, they said, you know, they, they looked at some other people they didn't get. We asked also, why are we workshopped by him? Who workshopped them? <laughs> <laughs> to know this, no answer from them. Because we're supposed to be workshopped by other people who are no longer in the PE, who knows PE, how it should work. The way you did is the way you're going to workshop us. Which means if we were underperforming, to the community, we will worse underperforming. So they said Konya will be the one who will be liaising with us and the uh, Australians, and Bulgarian will be our lawyer. They are no more the directors. Mm. Okay, we agree from there. In 2006, on December the 2nd, the day after Maxwell Bulgarian and Zemelia Konya had workshopped the community and introduced new directors to Zolko, 
A special mediation meeting had been arranged between a group of local residents from Sigidi village and the mining interests represented by John Barnes and Maxwell Bokwana. Let's hear what Max Bokwana's justification for Zolko's existence. But the responsibility of government is to say if there's going to be any activity around the place, there has to be a benefit of the communities around. It was at that point that I was formed from the minerals and energy and I was told that that is this process that's going to take place and I was asked if I'm willing to assist in this process to make sure that the interest of the community throughout this process is taken care of. But one needs to be extremely careful when you talk about that because I personally and anybody that I advise don't want that person to be taken up by promises that will never be met. You cannot go on and say you've got to be an empowerment company because people expect money, people expect growth, people expect all their unmet needs. But how do you meet those needs when there's not even an application for a mining license? One thing you do is to position yourself, educate people sufficiently to just make sure that they are properly positioned, not to tell them false lies not to tell them things that you know yourself you are not going to be able. And, and not of us in the meeting yet, the day before yesterday. When we're saying, first thing you have to do, you disband Zolko as it stands, right? You recreate Zolko in a manner that covers all these villages, right? So Zolko has to have five directors. We had prepared a structure, but it's a structure that was not coming from the people. And I took that trust and I threw back to the people and said, look, this is the idea I had, you see, you see, about how you should go forward, how it also should be owned. And that structure is simple, a structure that says, what do we have in the area? We've got young people, particularly interested in two things, education, particularly interested in what is killing people in this area, HIV, AIDS, and generally health issues. And then two, you've got adults, elderly, and the disabled. You've got women as a different sector in the area. You've got business people. You've got Akoda and Igonkulu, that is traditional leadership. And we're saying Zorko has to be owned by these people. Right? Each of these trusts will represent each of the five villages. And each person in that village falls in under one of these categories. Zolko will take interest whether it's mining that's coming up or the, whether it's N2 that's coming up, whether it's safari lot, whether it's any other venture of note that takes place in the area. But what we need to do is to make sure that Zolko is controlled by those five people and at the end of the day is governed by these people but is controlled by these trust, um, these six trusts. And this trust will cover the entire area. If there's any kind in my advice that I've ever given in the community, this is a structure. And I'm quite prepared to hang in the cross for this structure. And what I've made up very clear is there is no intention of money going to anybody's pocket in this. Whether you're chairman of this trust or whether you're a director here, the money has to go to identified projects in this, in this state. But it's no use for me to live this thing as it is. How do we put our resources together to train these people so that they can understand what is the responsibility of a director? Sabane, a school principal and one of six directors of the BEE company, is very excited. Speaking in his own capacity, he waxed lyrical about the benefits mining would bring. What impresses you about the document? One is that the mining is coming with the electricity. Two is that the mining is coming with the roads. But as we were doing things, for instance, a workshop and coming to the people to present over what is the mining is going to come with. We were becoming frustrated. One, we're having our secretary, which was called Zega Minyamana, mm. and our chairperson, which was Nomangese. Mm. But they didn't receive the information from them directly. All the information were coming from Konya. 
And we ask these guys, but why do you conduct Kunya while he is no more a director? We have our, our secretary here. We have our chairperson, which means we should conduct him directly. They said that it is his instruction, you see? They don't ask if it is his instruction, it means we are, we are not the directors. We go to the computer, then we find that we gave Botswana everything to register us. We are no more registered. They are still there. We tried to form an office around the Mzamba. Everything was posted to Amtata, the office which was organized by Konya. Mzamba, here you are. Why did you suggest to dissolve the phone call after we inquired about it? Why did you to have this wonderful idea of dissolving the phone call and thinking about electing the support from all these five communities? Uh, before we ask about And then, why does the committee not need to wear the in the company, the instruction, you know, the form of this company? I think that's very, very important because everything might turn exactly on that. Outside, why we had Tolko with not this structure you say it's complicated? was because we just had to beat the deadlines that the Australians were putting. What? What the government wants, it's a black empowerment company, right? Now, the black empowerment company is not defined as a black empowerment company of Colobin. What then, the minerals and energy said to me, look, you will have Tokyo coming as a partner with, uh, um, with, with the Australians or any other so-called <coughs> black empowerment people. What then we had to do was to very quickly say, to the Australians, you close any gap in this thing that might include anybody from outside, all right? So immediately, because we had to beat the deadline against all other people that the Australians were talking to, we said, no, 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 no. That state has to remain at Kolobeni. And then we will go back to Kolobeni and, and, and work out ways how it will benefit people from John. The directors individually are not going to benefit. We took a decision that Madiba will resign as a director of Colobin some time ago and give this to other people because you say you've got Madiba that looks like he can see. But I said to him, the tragic Madiba is, if you die, I don't know who else can see in this community. So your responsibility is to train other Madiba so that we can have as many Madiba as possible in this community. So Madiba, for instance, is out and the directors of Zolko are five people that report to the trust, all right? And I'm saying, John, okay. my job and your job is to help these people so that they don't get manipulated by the Australians, they don't get manipulated by anybody. There was there, this John Clark was called to us that he is uh, fooling the people. He is a poor, he doesn't like the people of this area to develop because this is coming with a lot of money. 560 million and the directors will get 20 million and uh, in the budget which has been done the 5 million will be delivered to the community and the 15 million the directors will see what to do then it means uh, the directors will be very rich by so say <laughs> then from that David have seen me point out that I'm having so many questions he tried to, to sideline me then we decided that no guys this is going to be a problem. After they have workshop to the communities, that it, there is mining that is coming. It has got 560 million. Everything, everything narrating the story which has been narrating by Max Bokwane to us. Then we have decided, me and no man gets and look at that. Let's go to Mandela's nephew around Amtata. Who has got the lawyers of mining? We arrange a meeting with him in Wild Coast, in the auditorium there. He came with two white guys, and we, we, we went there as five directors, and David Kunya was there. The two lawyers for him, they introduced to us that they are the lawyers, they know all the mining in South Africa, even in Botswana. They started to, to narrate. After they finished, Sarah told me that, you see, these guys are narrating this operating mining as John Clark. 
<laughs> I asked, you mean they are informed by John Clark? He said, no, they don't know that John Clark narrated like this. Did he was that? confirming that John Clark, what John Clark said, is said by these people now. And then, we, then Zega became confused because uh, it was not the first time to get this. The main point which they said, those guys, they said, there is no guarantee of what the community is going to get in the social labor plan, in all documents. There is no guarantee. That this will guarantee that the community will get it. Mm. Up to then, an extent that they said, even if them get this certificate of mining, they have got the right to sell the certificate to other company. And that company can buy or can negotiate with another PEE, which is not sold, which is not in Colombia, anywhere in South Africa. But under the social labor plan, which was, which was narrating, narrated by Marx, okay. but one was saying the PEE will be follow many people under any circumstance. We have decided that no, this is not working. Because the nephew of Mandela asked David whether, as he assists to have mining in our area, if he has sold that land to these people, he must verbalize them. He became quiet. He asked him three times. And he said, never use the name Matiba because Matiba is my family. Don't use it again. You must use David Kunya because we are not corrupt in our family. Because this goes with a corrupt way. No one asked him the question, simple one. How can we control this situation because now it's worse if it is like this if it is like this presentation is worse we are selling the land of Amatiba. we are selling our people to the worst poverty they are the other thing that they mention is that the smelter will not be here is going to buy which em which will employ more than 400 people which means Amatiba people will not benefit from that smelter Hmm. Only those that will be taking the, the will be watchmen, men looking after the machines, which will be less than five. So there is no job opportunity that is coming to our area due to this way the social labor plan is drafted. It's not guaranteed that there will be, which was proposed by the people, 60% of Amatiba community to be employed because it will be far. How can a Colombian person or a Matiba or a Baleni can be employed down there in East London? From then now, okay, where the decision was that, let's go to our tribal. We agreed that we will go to the tribal. And we mentioned the date. We received the calls in the evening. David was insulting us, saying we are not educated. We called somebody to explain for us who has been uh, 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 who, has, who has talked with John Clark on the other way around. That is not true. But if we don't know something, we have a right to call somebody to explain to us. And we took a decision. And Madiba said, no, we must go away from Zolko if we, we don't do this. We said, no, we can go away. There's no problem. Because this is a, a, there's a friction here. The people, they don't understand this. We don't understand as leaders. When we ask some other people to explain to us, you said we're stupid, we better leave it. That is how mm. I picked up mm. I went off mm. to Solko. It's because there was no truth. No truth. Yeah, there was no truth there. The, the problem in Pondolet has everything to do with you, John, with them, with me, with KPK, with, with everybody that people that are protecting land, people that are protecting birds, people that are protecting animals. Selfishness, greed, opportunism that comes from all of us, not from the fund of people. And it's us that has to deal with ourselves. I'm saying this thing passionately. I'm originally a fund of myself, and I, I know the manipulation that comes from outside. Do you sometimes feel that people or maybe accepting money from 
Yeah, I feel so that there are some people that are accepting the money from the mining people. If, if you were, were living in this area, you could see it. I have since lodged a complaint with the Cape Law Society against Max Bukwana for what I alleged to be gross and proper conduct for an attorney. The most serious complaint concerns the submission of false information to the Department of Resources. Part of the evidence in support of my complaint is the testimony of Nkula Lekam. Help me, what can we do to make sure we get beyond this one? No, the only thing is to workshop the people. The people must be well informed about the truth of everything. And they must be educated for their rights. That it is wrong to register somebody under something else. Mm. Unless you speak out, unless you address what are violations of human rights. I quoted a very famous passage from Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, where, after all, do human rights begin in all states? on any maps of the world and she said that the way in which this would be done would be by concerted citizen action by people holding their governments accountable in january 2007 i was privileged to meet the international human rights icon Mary Robinson. She introduced me to the quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. Dr. Robinson returned to South Africa last year. I met with her and told her of the huge success story we had achieved with the South African Bill of Rights had acquired meaning in a small place close to home. Except today it is a place which shows up on the maps of the world. Mary was thrilled to hear that at last we had a living example of, to show the world that human rights in South Africa at least, do not belong to government. Nobody's going to tell you your job, your job. You are, and you don't tell us our job as well. Party, Nomsha, Zindoezinizi <laughs> The principle is about an uh, environment for sustainable development. And this is really... It's all about people's land rights. It, 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 it's all about that. And it, again, this is about sustainable development. It's about rights. It's about land. It's about all of that. And I want to talk to the company, and I hope you will record this one. Yes. It's not about human rights being violated. It's a process of consultation which was not done properly. The story has been about cursing the darkness and the deceit. In Kululeka, Msabani has lit one very illuminating candle. He is a principal with principles. Mr. Msabani has, over the last decade, while also having to fight his battles with Zolko, has managed to achieve a truly remarkable turnaround in the grade 12 pass rate. From a baseline of 28% in 2008, 56.4% in 2011. If he could have simply maintained that level for 2012, it would have still been remarkable because at the beginning of the year, he found himself with a, a hundred more learners to accommodate. On the 3rd of January, I received a text message. Halala, Baleni equals 
3.4%. God is good all the time. Umsabane. <laughs>